people of the internet my name is Johnny welcome back to yet another very exciting FNAF news video it's been a while since we've done a single FNAF news video focusing on just one topic but over the last week we've gotten a lot of very interesting updates in regards to a lot of different projects so I'm gonna try doing some solo FNAF news videos on those topics so they can go a bit more in depth and hopefully make for some better discussions in the comments because I can understand in those giant compilation news videos there's a lot of moving parts there's a lot of news to keep track of sometimes it's just hard to keep track of everything and of course we got all this massive news over the past week or so which is also when I was super sick so I couldn't even make news videos but today we got some very interesting book news which normally I don't really talk about a whole lot because I'm not into the book scene but this has been probably some of the most fascinating book news we've had in a very very long time you've probably seen everyone talk about it already so let's not waste any more time scroll down tickle that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the FNAF news and now let's talk about FNAF the week before if you remember back in January Scholastic released its 2024 publishing schedule for all their FNAF books and it had a lot of books we already knew about right the security breach files updated edition the FNAF movie novel the glow in the dark coloring book but something super fascinating was this interactive young adult novel volume one right this was the only book in that publishing lineup we had no clue about it was brand new it had no cover no official title all we knew is that its release date was September the 3rd of this year and it took a few months up until last week when we finally got the answer to to what this book was because this is the cover for five nights at freddy's an interactive novel the week before now we do also have a description for the book but before we talk about that let's take a look at this cover now the first thing that i and many other people noticed is that this freddy looks awfully similar to Freddy Fazbear from FNAF Plus. I'm sure you're all aware of FNAF Plus, but just in case, it's a Fazbear Fanverse initiative game, or at least it was. It was being developed by Fiznom, but ultimately it seems like it's been dropped from the Fazbear Fanverse initiative and seemingly has been straight up canceled, doesn't look like it's going to be released anymore. But now we get this book out of nowhere that seems to feature Freddy Fazbear from the now canceled FNAF Plus game. The red stripe on the hat was really the dead giveaway. The face structure, as well as the alignment alignment and you know just general design of his teeth basically all this Freddy is missing is the vest and then you've just got FNAF plus Freddy so I've seen a few people use that as evidence for oh this isn't actually about FNAF 1 or this isn't actually going to be about the main Freddy Fazbear we all know and love this is going to be that original Freddy's location with the unwithered animatronics or something along those lines there are two things that disprove that number one the description which we're going to get to in a quick second just straight up says that this is a prequel to FNAF 1 and number two the most likely reason for why it looks like FNAF plus Freddy I'm sure the artist just googled Freddy Fazbear as a reference for this cover art and we've seen this in the past with news articles the first image that comes up is usually from FNAF plus so honestly I think this was just a mistake and Scott was like Eh, it's still Freddy good enough so I don't think this is at all any way connected to FNAF plus I think it was just a mistake on the artist's end but moving on from Freddy other details to note about this cover it looks like we're looking through a security camera we can faintly make out some static covering Freddy and it would make sense if this is a security feed for the cameras because we're working as the night guard obviously you can also make out in the bottom left a bottle as well as some other smashed glass as well as what appears to be a staircase or some sort of railing for some stairs this has led some people to theorize that this cover isn't actually located at freddy fazbear's pizza instead wherever this cover is set is some sort of house whether that be the house of the night guard who it does look like is also on the cover we can see a hand wearing a watch you know a watch that would most likely let the night guard know when it's 6 a.m when a shift is over or maybe that's just one of the various victims of freddy we're gonna find out in the story but that is everything on the cover now let's move over to the official description for the book it reads just in time for the 10th anniversary of Five Nights at Freddy's return to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza in this interactive novel in which you decide what happens. I think it's best we take this description step by step. So first of all, it does seem like this book is for the 10th anniversary, which makes sense. It releases early September. FNAF's anniversary is early August, so it does line up with the 10th anniversary. Return to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza in this interactive novel in which you decide what happens. If you don't know how an interactive choose-your-own-adventure novel novel works it's pretty simple you're reading the book eventually you're going to get to a page that makes you make a choice let's say we're in the office freddy shows up at our door or chica or bonnie or whatever we'll get the option in the book should we a close the door b just accept our death c hit the gritty to distract the animatronics or d go horror 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 make fun of freddy so he gets sad and walks away 
right? Those are definitely options that are going to be in the book, by the way. Let's say we want to insult Freddy. The book will say next to that option, okay, turn to page like 92, right? Or if we just want to close the door and maybe survive, it'll say, all right, turn to page, you know, 36. So whatever option you pick, you turn to that page and you keep reading until eventually you get to another option. Rinse and repeat until you get to the end of that storyline, you get to the ending, or you just finish the book. Return to where it all began in this interactive prequel to the very first Five Nights at Freddy's game. There you go, just another piece of evidence this is a prequel to FNAF 1. It actually explicitly says it is a direct prequel to FNAF 1, connecting it to the game. So I, I, I'm curious if this is the first time we've had a book just outright say, Hey, this is directly connected to the game, by the way, because I know that is a huge debate in the book scene, but this is absolutely taking place in that FNAF 1 Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. There's just, there's no doubt about it in my mind. It lays it out perfectly. You, the reader, are the security guard, and you've got five nights, or is it six, to survive Freddy, Chica, Bonnie, and Foxy as they try to wipe you out. With over 25 different possible endings and two difficulty settings, this one-of-a-kind innovative novel is a uniquely entertaining experience for any Freddy fan. 25 different endings. That is crazy. That is absurd. That's so many endings. I'm not sure how the difficulty setting works. I've read a few choose your own adventure novels. I don't think they've ever had a difficulty setting, so I don't know if the story is like duplicated in one book, you know? The entire book is 256 pages, so I mean, that's a pretty beefy number of pages, which again, makes sense. There's 25 different endings, but it gets you wondering what exactly are those endings? I pray, please, Scott Cawthon, do not let the 25 endings just be, oh yeah, you died to Chica. Oh, you died to Bonnie. Oh, you died to Bonnie in the security office. You went into the closet, you died to Bonnie. You went into the bathroom, you died to Chica. You went into Pirate Cove, you died to Foxy. If they're all just dying to different animatronics, I'm gonna be so disappointed. I think it makes sense if there are endings to dying to each animatronic, but don't let it be like, more than one or two endings for each animatronic. You can have like you die to Freddy in the office or you can get a power out and that's how you die to Freddy because that's still pretty different, right? I feel like that could play out differently. I'm really hoping for some unique endings like, oh, we, we go into the safe room right? Or we go into the backstage area, we find like some body stuffed in a suit, or maybe we get stuffed into a suit. You know, phone guy was always interested in all those empty suits back in the backstage area. Maybe sometime uh, you could check inside those suits uh, in the back room. I'm gonna try to hold out until someone checks. Maybe it won't be so bad. Yeah, I, I, I always wondered what was in all those empty heads. Back there. And I think that brings us to the main topic of the book. Because if you've looked at any YouTuber or anyone online talk about this book, you'll know that they are dead set on this being a story about Phone Guy. I mean, think about it. It's set in FNAF 1, or it's a prequel to FNAF 1. Who worked the night shift before Mike in FNAF 1? Um, I actually worked in that office before you. I'm finishing up my last week now, as a matter of fact. So I know it can be a bit overwhelming. But I'm gonna tell you, there's nothing to worry about. Phone guy. He's finishing up his last week there, as a matter of fact. The story is literally called The Week Before. The week before Mike works at FNAF 1 because it is a prequel to FNAF 1. I mean, it just makes so much sense. Why wouldn't it be about Phone Guy? Phone Guy is such a fan favorite character, but also still pretty mysterious. He's not really appeared in any of the recent games besides reusing his lines from the first three. We don't even know the dude's name. We've just been calling him Phone Guy. So if this book is really about Phone Guy, we're gonna get a lot more info on him. We're gonna get a lot more info on what the pizzeria was like before Mike started working there. And if there is a canon ending, we might actually finally find out who killed Phone Guy when he was recording his Night 4 phone call. That's been another very heated debate in the community way back since FNAF 1 released 10 years ago now, because on that phone call during his final words, you can hear all the animatronics attacking him, Foxy banging on the door. It's been a bad night here for me. Chica and Bonnie groaning and moaning. Oh, no. Pretty sure his power went out, if I remember correctly. Back there. No. But then ultimately you hear Golden Freddy's laugh. So forever, it seems like it's always been a coordinated attack with all the animatronics, but then Golden Freddy finally getting the final blow. But again, if this is about Phone Guy, we can finally figure out who he is, what's his name, who actually killed him. And that just sounds incredible. And also keep in mind, like we mentioned at the start of this video, this is a volume one. This is the first entry in a brand new series of books, brand new interactive choose your own adventure book series. Think about all the other stories we could get with characters that usually don't get a whole lot of spotlight. 
Like, this book in particular just sounds so, so fun, so interesting, so intriguing. And the fact that it's a volume one, and Scholastic and Scott know that, yeah, fans are going to be hyped about this, let's make a series about these interactive novels, like, that just has me so excited. I might actually read this, Scott Cawthon, you might actually convince me to read a FNAF book. But I am very, very curious, what are your thoughts, what are your theories on this book? What other stories would you like to see in the form of Choose Your Own Adventure books? This 10th anniversary is going to be so, so incredible. Also, keep in mind, we've got Into the Pit coming up. Which also, by the way, the author for the week before it is followed by Mega Cat Studios, the developers behind Into the Pit. Not sure if there's any connection between Into the Pit and the week before, but I guess we're just gonna have to wait and find out. Thank you all so much for watching watching this news video. I've got a lot more news videos coming out later this week. But again, thanks for watching and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.